for the Israelites. And how they continuously grumbled or how they complained, even though God brought them out of bondage. Okay? And it's the same for us today, folks. God brings us out of the bondage of sin. He gives us salvation, the free gift of salvation. We simply receive it by faith. But yet, we still grumble and we still complain. And God tries to teach us things, and He'll put us through things, and it goes in one ear and out the other. But if you turn with me to Exodus 15, I'm going to read a few, then comment and read some more. But basically, we're going to read 15, and a little bit of 16, almost all of 16, and a little bit of 17. Okay, so bear with me here. Now we read, we're going to start at verse 22, 15 and 22. And you got to remember the context of what we're talking about. God just pardoned Moses through God's help, through the, the authority or, or anointing, whatever you want to call it. God parts the Red Sea. So we're right after this. So we understand the context that we're talking about. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days into the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Mar, they could not drink of the waters of Mar, for they were bitter. For, for the name of the, was called Mar. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? What shall we drink? Now, the point I want you to get is three days. It's only been three days. And in three days, you get pretty thirsty in three days. So I'm not debating that at all. Okay? I'm not debating the fact that we, we often say, Where am I going to get this water to drink? But what I want you to catch is the attitude they had. Okay? Verse 24, and the people murmured. They grumbled. They just didn't ask Moses, but they was, they was complaining. All too often, we're the, we're the, God delivers us, and we're just like the Israelites. He frees us from the bondage of sin, the curse. And what do we do? How soon we forget what God has done for us, and we start complaining. Amen? It's no different. No doubt in my mind when they seen this water bar, they aha, ah, man, whoo, going to get me a drink, get me a drink on. But they go over in the water's bit, or it's salt water, they can't drink, okay? So I understand the frustration. We, we, we got trials and tribulations in our life, and I understand our, our frustration. But it's the attitude that we have. The attitude that we have is so important. It's so important, okay? Back to Exodus 15, and we just part of 25 here, no more comment. And he cried unto the Lord, now this is Moses, cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance, and there he proved them. I'm going to read that last part again, but I want you to catch here. He made the waters drinkable. And how did he do it? He put a tree in there. He put a piece of wood in it. Amen? It's amazing how you look back and you look through the Old Testament. Some, I've read this the first time I've seen this. And, and to be quite honest with you, this is God didn't give me this message. I've heard this message and I've added to it and some things out. But when I heard this, I never looked at it like it was being explained to me. And when I read it, I think, oh man, it's amazing how the Old Testament is just full of stuff that if you just look at it in a different light. But if they made the water available to drink by a piece of wood or a tree. Jesus. I'm going to pick on Joey. Joey, you got your Bible? Mm -hmm. John 7, <coughs> verses 37 through 39. See, they may have forgotten God, but God didn't forget them. Amen? He made the water drink for How do you do it? By a tree. By a piece of wood. New Testament, same way. God, we forgot about God. God didn't forget about us. He makes a way for us to get that sweet water. It's through Jesus on the tree. Peace of the Lord. Amen. Read it, brother. Take off verses uh, 37, 37 through 39. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit, who those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Whoever believeth in me, whoever believeth in this piece of wood, 
This whoever believes in the cross, whoever believes in this tree, come to me and I'm going to make this water for you free. Drink. Drink freely. And it's going to be dwelling within you. A river flowing within you. And we're talking about the Spirit. Amen? So it's, once again, it's just beautiful to me. Maybe nobody else gets it, but it's beautiful to me how you take something, you can read it in the Old Testament, you can read it a hundred times and never really get it. And once again, I didn't get this. Somebody else did. I'm not trying to take nobody's thunder. I'm not trying to put myself above anybody else. But when I heard this, like, wow, that's truly amazing. That they made the water able to drink by a piece of tree. Back to Exodus 25. The latter part of B in the morning 26. The waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance. And there he proved them, or tested them. Okay? And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and wilt give heed to his ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. God goes on. They forgot God, but by God's grace, He's going to throw them. He's going to put a piece of wood in it. He's going to die on the cross in the New Testament. He's going to make a way for us anyway. And He goes on to say, "Look, now I'm going to just because you come to receive salvation, that means a better road. Just because the Israelites was brought out of bondage, didn't mean this going to happen. They were able to have the land of milk honey, but there was a journey to get to. Amen." One day we're going to have that land of honey. But it's, this is a journey that we're in. Things are going to lie. Things are going to happen. And we have to persevere and overcome. All right? It says, if we keep his statutes. What is the statute that we must keep today? <clears throat> it's simply keeping the faith. Nothing more, nothing less. It ain't about a bunch of lists that check, you know, check off. The statute that you keep today is two. Love God and love people. Amen. Keep those statutes. He's going to keep the diseases off of you. Now, I'm not saying we're not going to get sick. What's the disease? What was the main disease that Egyptians had? They wasn't God's people. They was lost. What's the main one? We, we don't give our hearts and soul to Christ. We don't receive the free gift of salvation. What's the worst disease there is? A damnation of hell. For eternity. But if we will keep his ordinances, keep his ordinances, he will heal us. Amen. Doesn't mean that we're going to be never have to be sick. Doesn't mean never mean we're going to have a sniffle. Doesn't mean we're going to have trials and tribulations. But he will heal us. He will make us whole. Amen. God is so good. Verse 27. And they came to Elam where there are twelve wells of water. And three score and ten palm trees, seventy palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. God abundantly provided. He abundantly provided people. We may say, I'm going through this and he's not supplying. But what's the one thing we've got to realize when we moment? When we start complaining and start grumbling, what's the one thing we've got to realize? First Corinthians 12. I'm sorry, second Corinthians 12, I'm sorry. <coughs> 